Are you ready to explore the universe with Astroroxy? This year we have some amazing astronomical events like the hybrid solar eclipse or a naked eye comet and so much more. So without any further ado, let's get started with this year. Hello everyone and welcome to Astroroxy. So in January we have already passed the quarantines meteor shower but on the 22nd of January we have a cool conjunction between Venus and Saturn. Both of these planets are amazing. Venus is very bright. Saturn has its rings. So if you have a telescope or binoculars, 22nd of January will be a great day. And even with the naked eyes, you can see the pair along with the moon. Coming to February, we have a very big event. That is the comet C 2022 E3 ZTF or Zwicky comet in short on 1st and 2nd of February. This is going to be a great time to spot this comet in the sky. You can use a telescope, binoculars, you can try doing astrophotography with the camera with the smartphone. Some astronomers think that the brightness can get twice as much if that happens we can see this comet with our naked eyes as well from all over the world. On the February 16th we have the solar conjunction of Saturn. This means that Saturn will go behind the sun and we will not be able to see it in the evening sky morning sky any time at all for a few weeks then on the 28th of february we have the conjunction of the red planet with the moon and also february is known as the month of messier objects both in february and in march we can see these messier objects best they were discovered and cataloged by charles messier so you can see things like the pleiades cluster andromeda galaxy beehive cluster and other messier objects in the night sky Now coming to March we again have two conjunctions on the same day on the 2nd of March we have the conjunction between Jupiter and Venus both are very bright planets they will be appearing very close and as well as Mercury and Saturn so you can watch all these four planets together with each other then we have the equinox on 20th of March this marks the astronomical start of spring in the northern hemisphere and the fall in the southern hemisphere and on this day the length of the day and night they both are equal all over the world and this is also a very good time to carry out the eratosthenes experiment where we measure what is the circumference of the entire earth so both solstices and equinoxes are a good time and i've observed it a few times already so this is the time to do the eratosthenes experiment moving forward on 24th of march we have the lunar occultation of venus from parts of the world including india so we have asia africa what is going to happen is the venus is going to go behind the moon we will see venus in the sky for a while it will go behind the moon so we will not be able to see at all and after a while it will come back again so if you have a telescope or binoculars this view is going to be great and even with the naked eyes you can try to spot it now continuing with april we have a hybrid solar eclipse on 20th april a hybrid solar eclipse is a rare phenomena where the eclipse appeared both as the annular and total solar eclipse depending upon where you are observing it from this eclipse is very rare as it occurs only once a decade unfortunately this will not be visible from india but it will be visible from parts of indonesia and australia and if you are waiting for a meteor shower then on 22nd of april we have the lyrid meteor shower it originates from the comet thatcher and we cannot see a great show but up to 15 20 meteors you can see in an hour moving forward we have the penumbral lunar eclipse on 5th of may this eclipse occurs when the earth passes between the sun and the moon but the moon only passes through earth's outer shadow and that's why we will not see the moon go completely dark but if you have a telescope and if you are trying to do astrophotography you can see a slight dip in the brightness of the moon that is it is going to appear less brighter than the usual but still not something that we can tell apart from our naked eyes then we have the equirids meteor shower on may 6 This is better than Lyrid's meteor shower. We can see up to 40 meteors in an hour, and this originates from the comet Halley. Then on May 17, we have the lunar occultation of Jupiter, and as you can guess, just like in the case of Venus, now this time Jupiter is going to go behind the moon. This event is visible from some parts of the world, like America and Europe. Coming to the summer months now, on June 11th, we have another meteor shower, but this is a daytime meteor shower. It's not the usual night time where you can look up, you can stay awake in the night and spot a shooting star. No, what happens is the radiant is at the highest point in the sky, but in the daytime so if you want to see you have to wake up early you have to see them spot them in the dawn hours the window is very short 
30 to 40 minutes before the sun rises in that time only you can spot it because as soon as the sun rises the meteors will just be too faint to see then on june 14th we have venus in the beehive cluster so beehive cluster is just like the pleiades cluster we have you can see the stars are closely packed together from your naked eyes and this time venus is going to appear very very close to them again a great opportunity to do observe venus as well as mars along with the beehive cluster then we have the summer solstice june 21st the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere this marks the first day of the summer things are going to get very hot from here on out very interestingly on july 6th the earth is at aphelion what that means is the earth is at its most farthest point from the sun in its orbit and we usually have this misconception that in the northern hemisphere we have the summer so maybe the earth is very close to the sun but that's not the case seasons do not have to do anything with where the earth is and what is the distance between the earth and the sun that has to do with the tilt of the earth so the earth is going to be farthest from the sun in the summers and it is still going to be very hot on July 9th, Venus is going to appear at its greatest brightness. So this is the best time to take pictures of Venus and to spot it even with a telescope with naked eyes, anything you want to do. Now moving forward with August, on the 1st, we have a, a super moon. That means that the moon is going to appear more brighter and bigger than it usually is. On super moons, what happens is the moon is much more closer to the Earth. So it appears bigger in the sky. And coming to the 12th of August, we have the Perseid meteor shower. Now this is an incredible summer meteor shower, the best one you can get. You can see more than 100 meteor shooting stars within an hour if you go to a dark sky, a clear night sky, that's the case. But even if you don't have a clear night sky, even if you're living in a city, then also you can spot a few meteors in the night sky. On August 27th, we have the Saturn at opposition. Now at opposition, what happens is a planet is directly opposite to the sun in the sky and closest to the earth. This makes the best time to observe a planet and it is visible all night long. So this is the best time to observe Saturn. Try to get the view from a telescope, binoculars, try to take pictures of it as this is the best time. And on August 31st, we have a super blue moon. A blue moon is the second full moon that happens in the calendar month. On September 19th, we have Neptune at opposition. We can't see this planet with our naked eyes, but this will be the best day to spot it using a telescope and to take pictures of it. On 23rd of September, we have the fall equinox, the day and the night once again, they go with the same length and this marks the start of the fall in our northern hemisphere. And what about the southern hemisphere? The spring is just getting started. On 29th of September, again, we have a super moon. The moon appears very bright and this is the last super moon of the year. We're coming to the end of the year now. On the October 2nd, we have a great opportunity to photograph Andromeda Galaxy because it will be at its culmination point. This means it will reach highest in the sky and you can see it with your naked eyes, but it's very hard to see. You need dark skies, but you can capture it with your smartphone. It appears like a fuzzy blob and obviously you can take pictures of it using a telescope. And coming on the 3rd of October, we have Moon and Pleiades. The Pleiades star cluster and the Moon are going to appear very close. On October 14th, we have an annular solar eclipse. This happens when the moon is very far away from the Earth, so it cannot completely block the disk of the sun. We can still see a ring of fire, a ring of light there. And unfortunately, this event will not be visible from India, Asia, anywhere, only a few parts of America. Then on October 21st, we have the Oronoid meteor shower. It's not a great one, but you can try to look at it because this originates from the constellation of Orion. And as we all know, Orion is the best winter constellation. So it's a good time to photograph Orion constellation. And if you're lucky, you might get a shooting star in your image as well. And by this time, you might have noticed that a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse, they always happen in pair. And that's why on 28th of October, we have a partial lunar eclipse. This will be visible from America, Europe and Asia. But the whole moon is not going to appear blood red, just like happened in the last year. No, only a part of it will be visible red. And that too depends upon where you are watching it from. Now, moving forward to November, 
on the third we have jupiter at opposition just like saturn now this time jupiter is going to appear at its brightness it will be visible all night long this is the best time to observe the largest planet in our solar system and try to observe its great red spot and even its moon on 9th of november we have the lunar occultation of venus it will be visible from greenland africa but it will not be visible from our asia but what we can see is we can see venus very close to the moon so for us it will be conjunction and for some parts in the world it will be a lunar occultation on november 13th the planet uranus is going to be at opposition so just like jupiter saturn neptune this is the time for uranus to shine brightest in the night sky on november 18th we have the solar conjunction of mars that means this time mars is going to go behind the sun we will not be able to spot it in the morning sky in the evening sky for a few weeks to come Now coming to the last month of the year we have the Geminid meteor shower the king of all meteor showers this is going to happen this is going to peak on 13th of December this time more than 100 meteors you can see within a single hour if you're watching from a dark and clear night sky and this one is also visible from city skies and even if it's cloudy and the last one is the winter solstice so this is going to happen on 22nd of December we have the longest night of the year so there you have it this is a preview of what is stored in year 2023 and i'll be making separate short videos for example the comet one or the meteor shower one so stay tuned for that as they come the more detailed videos and i'm going to make another videos which is going to be about the space mission so this was about all the astronomical events the best one most of which you can see with your naked eyes and sitting at your home sitting at your backyard and the next one is going to be on the space missions nasa isro esa csa all of these space agencies sees what are they up to so thanks for watching this video i'll see you in the next one bye bye